I actually started on the running boards a long time ago before I recessed my build to go and restore my old motor guzzi. And I did restart on them after getting the bulk of the loco back together. But where do I go now? There's a really good chance that the motion plates need to move, which will of course have an impact, I'm sure, one way or another on the running boards. Incidentally, the details on Don's drawings for the running board in particular are scant and don't really tie up at all with the weight shaft bearings and lifting links. So I'm on my own here, no longer under Don's guidance. There is a balance on either side. Unfortunately, that's not such a simple job because it has to be machined to clear the cylinder block and also clear the brackets here on the motion plate. I'm not minded to go any further forward with the front running boards at this point, although I have modified these waste shaft bearing blocks. Otherwise, I'd have had to extend this notch, which brings it into the gap for the lifting links. And that, I think, would have caused me all sorts of problems. So I've notched the front of these revised bearing blocks so that the running board will slip underneath. Like so. But I'm not going to go any further with the front board until I really understand what the hell I'm going to be doing with these motion plates. As a quick aside, after my last video, a couple of you commented about Don Ashton's book, which I've since been out and bought and downloaded. So I am slowly working my way through it, and hopefully I'll be able to sort out this muddle with the motion plate. The rear running board is a lot simpler. It is basically just a rectangular sheet with two cutouts, one for the reverser stand, which I'm hoping is in the right position, and another one which I've yet to do for the brake handle or the brake handle column somewhere round about here. Actually, I've not got the brake gear back on. That would probably be a good thing to do. And then I can determine the position of the hole for the brake handle column. Maybe I won't be putting all the brakes back on. That little hole lurking down there between the cylinder and the front wheel is for the front brake hanger bracket. And I cannot fit the brake hanger with the cylinder and the motion gear in place. I have tried, but it just won't go. Never mind. I don't actually need all the brakes on, and I'm sure in the very near future, the motion plate will be coming off along with all the valve gear. So I'll refit the hangers and the full brake system at that point. So from a negative and onto a positive, my loco stand is paying dividends. So rather than having to manhandle the frames around the bench, I can just turn a handle. And we can see now that the brake steam cylinder and the brake shaft are fitted. And it's from these I'm gonna take the dimensions with respect to the frames and the buffers so that I can mark out and drill the hole through for the brake column and the brake handle. This is a lever arm that will fit to the brake handle column, which will go up through the bottom running plate over there somewhere. I'm just going to reposition the lever arm so it's closer to the frame. And I can just take a simple measurement. So 16.45, mil will work for that. And of course I can now just take the dimension from the outside of the frame to the outside edge of the running plate. 61.55. So we'll call that 61.5. And of course, I need to remove half of the width of the lever arm here. And there is a good millimeter or so of lateral play. That gives me 75.5 mil from the outside edge of the running plate. And now I need to get the distance from the 
outside face or the rear face of the buffer beam to the center of the slot in the lever arm. Maybe the purist should look away because I've got a small square clamped to the lever arm. And now I can use my vernier calipers to find the distance to that edge of the square from the rear face of the buffer beam. 73.6 mil. I've removed the running board from the frames. I've applied some Sharpie in the general area where the hole is going to be. A simple check, which is easy to forget, is making sure I'm drilling on the correct side of the running board. And I am. This is the rear of the running board. This is the left side. That's the front edge. The slot here is for the reverser. And that I positioned in very much the same way we're doing this here now. So I'm looking at 73.6 or 73.5 from the rear. And then 77 from the side. So I'll centre punch that and drill it out. Because the running boards are quite thin at 1.5mm, rather than using the drill, I'm going to plunge straight through with the slot drill. That should give me a much better finish. And because my centre pop is slightly off centre, I'm going to use the wiggler with the pointer to find the centre properly. We'll do a quick visual check with the column. And yep, that's fine. The million dollar question, is it in the right position? Let's find out. Unfortunately, you're going to get my fingers in the way as I screw on the buckle. I need to turn up a pin but otherwise I'm pretty damn pleased with that. I'll quickly knock up a pin on the lathe and we'll get them in position. See how it works. Don's design for these pins is much simpler than what I've made here. The pin fitted on the steam brake for the lever arm on the shaft is just a bit of 1 8 bar with a hole drilled in either end for a split pin makes it really awkward fitting them. Getting the split pins on both ends is really quite difficult. So I've made a slightly different one this time and I'll replace the one on the steam cylinder in the same way. So I've got a larger diameter at one end and I've actually cut a couple of flats on that. So that's five mil across the flats, which means I can hold it with a small spanner. And then I've got a one mil or a 1.1 mil hole drilled through the other end. What I need to do now is stick a split pin through there and that's done. All right, I think next, whilst I still study the intricacies of wall charts, I'm going to get on and make the cab. <laughs> 